Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Uh, got a lot of things going on. I wanted to cover a few of them today. But first off, I wanted to let you local folks know, at least local to me, and if you are, you probably know that, uh, that this weekend is our meeting. That's right, it's this Sunday, same time, same place. Uh, encourage you to come to this one because it should be a really good meeting. We have two special speakers. Um, one lady, she is a, a, a well-known advocate and expert in homeschooling. She's going to talk about maybe some current legislation affecting homeschooling and just homeschooling in general uh, and the importance of it. And then we have another gentleman uh, uh, who is, um, he's, he has his own radio show. Uh, he's a Vietnam vet and he was a Green Beret in Iraq. Um, he's been in law enforcement and he's become a very much a, a liberty advocate, uh, which is what his, his radio show is. He's been on uh, several different uh, podcasts and radio shows over the year, and he's coming to speak to us also. So I would encourage you uh, to come to the local meeting if you're able to, because it should be a good one. Uh, they have just become the highlight of a lot of people's month, uh, you know, two, 300 people gathering every month. Uh, we have an open market. Uh, if you have a business or you have a product that you make, or maybe it's just your children, you wouldn't believe. We have, usually have several different children that they'll make little pot holders or odds and end things that they're crafting and they come there and they try to sell it. And it's, it's a good thing to encourage them and teach them uh, how this works. And of course, as always in our open market, gold and silver and bartering is usually very much encouraged. So um, stick it to the IRS and the Fed uh, is what I always say. But if you can make it, please do. Uh, it's a potluck, so if you're coming, try to bring something uh, to, to contribute to the potluck. And it's just a big family-friendly event, uh, kind of a, an all-afternoon type of thing. Anyways, uh, so, so do that. Also, if you're, uh, if you're noticing that YouTube censorship is just becoming very, it's becoming extreme, okay? Uh, and, and for some reason, they've had it out for me for a while. I've been suspended three times now in the past 12 months. And they have warned me that I could be in jeopardy of losing my channel uh, if I just keep it up. And it's just difficult for me to just censor myself. So uh, I have moved my home base over to Rumble and Locals. And so, you know, if you want to keep watching me here, that's fine because I'll keep putting content on here as, as long as I can. But I'm putting all my main content uh, over on Rumble. So you need to go over there and subscribe to Rumble. And then uh, Locals is a membership version of, of Rumble. It's all free speech. And there you find the behind the scenes stuff, the extra stuff, the things that my wife and I are putting out extra over on Rumble. And that way, when YouTube, uh, you know, pulls the plug on me here, uh, you'll not miss a thing because you'll already know where I'm at. So, uh, the whole submarine thing, I don't know how many of you have been keeping up on it. It appears that the whole country has been keeping up on it. It's been kind of the highlight of the news cycle for the last few days, and apparently there's been a reason for that. Uh, some information was leaked yesterday. Uh, well, starting off, it was found that the, well, we've known that the sub was lost for days now. Uh, apparently the Navy, uh, some kind of deep microphone, sonar, whatever thing, detected uh, that the sub imploded just hours after it went below the surface to do its little exploratory run. Uh, but that information was kept quiet, uh, according to some insiders that the Biden administration said they wanted to keep that quiet because as I said yesterday, it was a coincidence, seemingly strange enough, that the sub information came out right about the same time that it was discovered that Hunter Biden was charged with felony crimes related to guns and then also some tax related crimes and that he pled guilty to them. And so to keep the heat off of that news story, um, they held the back the information that they knew that the sub had already been lost. And so they kept the entire country and really the whole world um, uh, hoping and thinking that there was some chance of surviving and some chance of rescue when in fact the sub had been lost uh, pretty much from the get-go. 
Uh, now, the, I can't prove that this is the correct information, but most of the news channels are now covering that they are, are there's insider uh, in information reporting this, some whistleblower or something like that. Uh, so that's interesting. And of course, then there's there's already the conspiracies of, well, was there even a sub to begin with? Or uh, was it done on purpose? Is this another Titanic? You know, the Titanic, there's a lot of people believe that the Titanic uh, was what really ushered in the Federal Reserve. And is this going to usher in something else? Is it just a signal? Is it a, 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 a required sacrifice for these evil people? I don't know. Uh, I know the conspiracies are just all over the board, as they usually are when something happens, uh, and there may be some truth in some of them. But what we do seem to know for sure is that the sub was lost very early on, and that information apparently was kept secret, which just is one more, one more thing showing how just evil and diabolical uh, this government administration is. Um, and it's not, I mean, yes, I, I would completely agree that the Biden administration is probably the worst this country's ever seen. But folks, they're all really bad when you really start digging into them. But anyways, uh, and then old <laughs> Lindsey Graham is at his warmonging self again. Uh, he is He's wanting to pass some kind of resolution or get some kind of confirmation that if if russia uses any kind of nuke in ukraine or that uh if they destroy or attempt to destroy the nuclear power plant in ukraine that that will immediately cause an article 5 this man i'm telling you sorry i walked into a spider web just before i started filming this and i've got you know how it is you get this you feel like you got them all over you which i don't think i do but anyways um just got that uh, creepy feeling even though I don't mind spiders at all. It's just it's just a human thing, I guess. But anyways, um, he, Lindsey Graham, just he just loves to send your children off to war. I mean, I don't think he's okay with his or, or himself going off to war, but he loves sending your children off to war. Um, you know, he's just definitely taken the place of, of John McCain, and, and now this guy is just front and center when it comes to any chance of us going to war. And so he's pushing that, and the way things are kind of starting to work in Ukraine and Russia, it's more and more likely that NATO is going to get involved. Um, just in the last 24, 48 hours, well, starting off, uh, Putin made a statement uh, a few days ago that, that if any uh, arms from the West, any munitions from the West are used to strike inside of Crimea, that uh, Russia would consider that um, that that those countries were now at fault and that they would be considered a threat and, you know, command centers would be struck and things like that. Well, yesterday, apparently, a bridge inside Crimea uh, was struck by Ukraine with a British-made uh, weapon that was given to them. And uh, so it's just it's just another escalation. You know, will how will Russia respond to this uh, remains to be seen. But certainly uh, that seems to be the case. Uh, Biden administration has given the go ahead for Ukraine to go ahead and try to take retake uh, Crimea, which I seriously and highly doubt uh, they're, they're capable of that. Uh, and then that's not me picking sides at all. That's just looking at the evidence on the surface. Um, of course, us and, and everyone else is sending, continually sending millions and billions of dollars over BlackRock, um, has set up a fund, and uh, we're talking like a half a trillion dollars in funds to rebuild uh, Ukraine. So, of course, BlackRock's got to have their hands in all of that. Um <clears throat> The, the hostilities just keep getting increasing between the two countries uh, instead of kind of downplaying it, even though, I mean, it was just a few days ago that Putin himself showed a document that was supposed to be basically leading towards peace shortly after things happened last year. Uh, but the United States and the West has been pushing and pushing, pushing for more war. Uh, Ukraine has... Uh, basically called every available man to service. Uh, throughout this, they've been in the sort of a martial law state, uh, and you could get drafted, you could get conscripted, 
uh, but yesterday they issued an order that every 18 plus year old male must absolutely report to a, a local recruiting office for service. Uh, reports are that they've lost over 13,000 troops already just in this uh, recent counteroffensive, and of course, lots of reports of tanks and arms and things like that being destroyed. Uh, it doesn't look really good for them. Um, it's, it's, you know, in the beginning, uh, it, it seemed to be a little bit easier to try to spin this that Ukraine was doing a good job, and now it's not looking so good, including that, that there are uh, some people in the Pentagon that are saying that, that they suspect that Ukraine either already has or in the very near future will run out of any types of arms that they themselves have produced or have, meaning that they're only using stuff that the West is sending them at this point. You know, that's the, the only weapons that's being sent to them. Poland is, is pushing really hard uh, to get involved in this. Uh, of course, Belarus now has uh, nuclear weapons from Russia, and they say that those are going to be there permanently. Uh, things are just just heating up, heating up, and as as bad as they are, and as as likely as they're, it's becoming that the that NATO will become more involved in this, and and we're already very involved. Um, I still kind of believe that this is this is in a way a distraction, and a way to deplete the West's arms because. On the other side of the of the world, we hear that we just don't have the munitions to fight a war with China right now. That that's that's the big delay. That's why we've got Anthony Blinken going over there, trying to smooth things over, while Biden's calling Xi a dictator and then trying to smooth that over. And well, it's because uh, we don't have enough arms to fight against him. It kind of makes me wonder that the, my original suspicion, my original conspiracy theory was that the Biden administration was bought and paid for by China and they were going to try to make it look like we were going to go to war when in the end we were just going to have to give in to China because it's either that or completely be destroyed. Uh, of course, a lot of people still speculating over cyber attacks, over uh, EMPs, over uh, uh, grid attacks because the DHS and other agencies have been warning about that. So <clears throat> to fulfill your doomsday-ish, uh, you know, uh, hunger today, it, it looks like that there's a lot on the war front that's happening and that could happen in the near future. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk about that for over a year now, ever since Russia invaded Ukraine. It's been just, you know, around the corner, right? It's, it's just around the corner, uh, and yet it never happens. And that may just be what continues to go on. Um, but it does seem like that at some point, something has to happen more. There, there's just too many, there's too many irons in the fire. There's too many things going on at once that it, it would stand a reason that at some point, uh, one of these areas are going to escalate. Uh, and the, and the, we're just talking about primary things that are going on right now. We're not even talking about the stuff going on in the Middle East with, with Iran and and in Israel and how the whole Middle East now has formed a, a naval force. And then of course there's North Korea always wanting to do something uh, to, to let the world know that they're still relevant. It's a lot. Um, and and we're, we're, we're really starting to see the fulfillment of wars and rumors of wars, um, I, in, if any of you still read the Bible. And then, you and I sat back and we try to figure out how, how is this affecting us and how will it affect us and how that we can, you know, get some level of preparedness for it. And <clears throat> because we don't know exactly what's going to happen and we've never experienced a war that, <clears throat> excuse me, that this most likely will be. I mean, I don't think it's going to be anything comparable to World War I or World War II and certainly not the other wars, you know, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, you know, places like that. I think this will be a, a much broader war, a much more deadly war, and it'll be a war to actually really change that world order that's existed for a long time. Uh, we're gonna see supplies deteriorate because we get so much from China. Uh, we're, we're probably going to see the US dollar become no more. Uh, CBDC will rise up because that's what they want. Um, you know, the IMF this week announced that they're putting out their own CBDC and and BRICS is supposed to have their currency ready by September. And 
and we're seeing things just line up and, and you and I are just kind of sitting and waiting for it to happen. And in, in some ways that's about all we can do. And in other ways you need to take that time to stock up and prepare because as bad as things seem right now, there's still yet time to prepare. I mean, you can still go to the store today and stock up. You can still, you know, order certain supplies. You can still, you know, get your homestead and start getting it ready. Will you, do you have as much time as someone that did started five years ago or two or three years ago? Of course not. Of course not. You, you have less time. You have to work a little bit harder and you may not get everything done, but you certainly have time. You, you can't just say, well, it's, it's too late. I, it, I'm done for, I'm giving up uh, because then you've already failed. You've already lost. So uh, continue pressing forward on, on your preparations um, because things, uh, things are just heating up constantly. And at, at some point, I, I mean, how can you look at all this and say that it's 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 just okay it's just normal it's not anymore it's not been for a very long time and i think it's it's all happening to to lead us to this point that that it's all going to change in a radical way and i think that the dragging it out and the overwhelmingness of it is to condition a lot of people to just expect that this is just normal now where we're, people are just now conditioned that uh, you know, that this is how life is and this is the way it's always going to be only to find out one day they wake up and their whole world is vastly changed. Don't let you be one of those caught up in it and, and caught off guard. So continue to prepare yourselves, get your houses in order, preparing mentally, physically and spiritually for the, the world that is changing and falling apart all around us. Folks, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.